but let's talk about East Africa for a second. We had Cal Casa, which you guys might know yeah, him on, go. a few weeks ago, and he talked a lot about the development in Ethiopia and how there's like gigawatts of potential there. I think it's shocked everybody to see how quickly yeah. Ethiopia went from zero to 600 megawatts nine, in nine months, right? Yeah. That was that was pretty crazy. And when I was sitting down with the, the head of the energy ministry, and I said, how much is, is operational? He's like, oh, 600. And I was like, no, no, no I mean, running miners. You know, like not just licensed to run them or they've they're maybe they're building the structure right now. It's like, no, no, they're 600 and by <laughs> next month we'll have another 100 meg megawatts. Sheesh. And so what was, and I don't know if you've seen any of the videos, but when we were there, like we went to see, um, so QRB Labs had set up their first site, uh, a couple of mining containers and then literally across the road. So 30 meters away was a, I think it was a 60 megawatt hydro site run by Bitmain. And then sharing a wall with the QRB labs was another 40 megawatt site. Those were run by some other Chinese miner that we yeah. didn't know. And um, while I was there, I also went out to visit three other sites. The, the, the striking thing is, is that the government set up the guardrails that said basically, okay, this is how you can do it. And then the Chinese took advantage of it. It will, if there is inexpensive energy anywhere in the world, it will be taken advantage <laughs> Bitcoin of. Bitcoin miners will go. <laughs> they, they, they're, they're, like everybody else is worried about risk, yeah. right? Bitcoin miners have a lower risk threshold. Yeah. Um, so wh wh what is this? What are the knock on effects of this though? So, you know, we know that the, the Ethiopian government made a hundred million dollars in revenue oh, just nice. off of Bitcoin yeah. miners in 2024. That's hard currency for them and they need it badly, yeah. right? So it's a good deal for them. What the signal is across Africa, if you're in the energy ministry or just in the treasury of your country, you're looking at what's happening in Ethiopia and saying, okay, how about that 400 megawatts we have stranded up in Northern Uganda? Yeah. We're, we're wasting a gigawatt in Tanzania every year. We have, you know, in Nigeria, we have, you know, g hundreds of gigawatts of high Hydro yeah. as well as as gas flaring. Our model at Gridless has always been about off grid decentralization, pushing out there to the edges and growing a large, uh, like constellation of energy and and mining sites. Yeah. And but the traditional way of coming in and setting up a five to hundred megawatt site is still valid in Africa. And what we're seeing is that's going to continue. And the Ethiopians have kind of cut the you know. You know, they, they cut it big and fast, you mm -hmm. know, they cut the, the, the route so everybody else can see how it can be done.